Now, before I get into the actual briefing of the 2.5 write localizer approach, I want to mention or for some review some specifics about non-precision approaches. So I'm going to talk about the uh, non-precision approach segments. There are four segments and I'm going to highlight them on this plan view of the approach chart. The initial approach segment begins at the IAF. The IAF is the initial approach fix. And you can see the IAFs. Here's one right here. Put a label on here in red so it's a little bit easier to see. This is an initial approach fix. There are usually more than one. Uh, there's one down here at the Boulder VOR IAF. The initial approach fix is where the instrument approach procedure begins. So that's where your terminal arrival route ends. And typically that means that's where your star ends, your standard terminal arrival. Uh, so the star ends there and the instrument approach itself begins. And there may be more than one IAF. And the reason for that is it depends on how you're coming into airport area or the terminal area. If you're coming from the north, this may become your initial approach fix. If you're coming in from the south or the southwest like I will be, uh, then this uh, will become my initial approach fix. Number two, at the intermediate approach fix, the IF segment, you are established on course and may be descending. So that's the second segment is the intermediate approach fix or the IF. And again, if we look on the plan view of the approach plate, here's the intermediate approach fix. And you can see that it's designated in parentheses with IF. So uh, HACO is the intermediate approach fix, the IF, for this particular uh, runway, this particular approach into Las Vegas Airport. Uh, the third segment, number three, is the final approach segment. And it usually has, but not always, an FAF mark, which stands for final approach fix, from which time or DME is used to guide the descent down to the MDA, the minimum descent altitude. Now here on the lower part of this approach plate, in the profile section, we can see the Maltese cross, which designates for a non-precision approach that that's the final approach fix, the FAF. So that's the third segment, the final approach fix. You do not leave the minimum descent altitude, MDA, until seeing the runway. The fourth segment is the missed approach procedure and extends from the missed approach fix to the usually to the holding fix. So the holding segment is your missed approach segment. In non-precision approaches, the final descent is initiated at the final approach fix, the FAF, which is represented by the Maltese cross on the chart profile view. The glide slope intercept altitude is represented by a lightning bolt symbol right here and is therefore not applicable to a non-precision approach. So this lightning bolt symbol and this 3800 number is the altitude. This is, this is the glide slope intercept if you're flying an ILS. But because I'm going to be flying a localizer approach with no glide slope, then I have to fly this as a non-precision approach. So I have to pay attention to the Maltese cross final approach fix and this altitude intercept for non-precision. It happens to be the same but this is for non-precision uh, approaches, 3,800 feet. These items down here are for ILSs. The purpose of the non-precision approach is not to put you on the runway. Its purpose is to get you down out of the clouds and inside of the runway so that you can visually land. Non-precision approaches use a minimum descent altitude or MDA. With an MDA the pilot levels off at that altitude and continues until either the missed approach point 
or the runway slash runway environment comes into view. On the bottom half of the approach plate just below the profile section is the minimum section. The MDA, MDA altitude can be found as pointed out here. In this particular case again I'm going to be uh, shooting a localizer approach so I'm going to be using under the type of, of approach I'm going to be using localizer and for the 737 uh, NGX category uh, C I'm going to be just just under the category C or just inside a category C so my minimum descent altitude is going to be 2560 feet and this is an MSL altitude 2560 feet that's the MDA with an MDA the pilot levels off at that altitude and continues until either the missed approach point or the runway environment comes into view now you'll note again in this minimum section this row is is if you're shooting an ILS here's the localizer if you're this row if you're these numbers are pertinent if you're shooting a localizer uh, here's a sidestep maneuver because there's two runways 25 left and 25 right and here's circling this is the row for circling uh, minimums non-precision and circling procedures share the same missed approach point and the pilot determines the missed approach point by timing from the final approach fix and that's this uh, little table here final approach fix to the missed approach point 5.2 nautical miles and this is a timing table for speed you can interpolate or precisely calculate your time to get minutes and seconds so you can determine the missed approach point by timing uh, from DME by a fix a nav aid or a waypoint now in our case the missed approach point is determined by DME in the airport diagram section what I have highlighted here in yellow tells me that DME can be used in lieu of a stopwatch to determine the missed approach point and it's 5.2 nautical miles from the FAF remember here's the FAF right here it's Condi and it's 7.5 DME out from the runway so the missed approach point is 5.2 nautical miles from the FAF so if we subtract 5.2 from 7.5 we get 2.3 so the missed approach point for this localizer approach is going to be 2.3 DME now that's the what I would call the original missed approach point but remember this particular approach has a VDP a visual descent point and again remember from the VDP video if you have a VDP on the plate that becomes your new missed approach point so without a VDP our missed approach point would be 5.2 subtracted from 7.5 and we come up with the 2.3 but because we have a VDP we're going to use 3.6 that's going to become our new missed approach point in in DME 3.6 nautical miles okay there are a few items I want to go over from the FAA's Airman Information Manual concerning non-precision approaches but specifically focusing on the missed approach point the MAP number one and and again this is from the FAA number one the missed approach point on a non-precision approach is not designed with any consideration to where the aircraft must begin descent to execute a safe landing number two it is developed based on terrain obstructions nav aid location and possibly air traffic considerations number three because the missed approach point may be located anywhere from well prior to the runway threshold to pass the opposite end of the runway the descent from the minimum descent altitude to the runway threshold cannot be determined based on missed approach point location number four descent from MDA at the missed approach point when the missed approach point is located close to the threshold would require an excessively steep descent gradient to land in the normal touchdown zone hence the development of the visual descent point five pilots are cautioned that descent 
to a straight-in landing from the MDA at the missed approach point may be inadvisable or impossible on a non-precision approach. And then finally six, aircraft speed, height above the runway, descent rate, amount of turn and runway length are some of the factors which must be considered by the pilot to determine if a landing can be accomplished. I want to talk about uh, something uh, very important on the approach plate. It's, it's in the bottom uh, part and it's in the minimum section. And I want to talk about the RVR, the, the runway visual range, the visibility value shown right here. On the entire approach plate, this is the only controlling value is runway visual range. And what do I mean by controlling value? Well, controlling value means that before you can begin to legally shoot this approach, the visibility has to be at or better than what's shown here. So if I'm, if I'm making a localizer, if I'm going to shoot a localizer approach in the 737 NGX and I'm just inside category C or within the category C boundaries, I need three quarters of a mile visibility. That needs to be reported, officially reported visibility before I can legally attempt to shoot this approach. So that's a controlling value. So if my visibility, and this is in statute miles, by the way, statute miles. So three quarters of a mile in statute is uh, equivalent to 4,000 feet RVR, runway visual range, RVR. So if the reported visibility on the ATIS or from the tower is one half mile, one half statute mile, then I cannot uh, legally even begin to shoot this approach. I can't, I can't make this approach. I can't, cannot attempt it. So of everything on the approach plate, RVR is the only item that's controlling for you uh, on whether or not you can even start the approach. And here are some here are some conversions I've I've put in here because sometimes the approach plate will show uh, three quarters or five eighths, which is in statute miles, and sometimes they'll just show four zero or five zero or three two, which is RV, an RVR, which is uh, 32 is 3,200, 40 is 4,000 feet RVR value. For a localizer, we have this number here, the height above touchdown, which is uh, 493 feet. And for circling uh, minimums, the same number here, um, although this is, uh, when I say the same, I mean this is, uh, in the same uh, position, although it's 899 feet, this is not height above touchdown. This is what we call HAA, height above airport. So for circling approaches, because we're circling, this is the uh, a higher number usually, 899 feet in this case, but this is our height above the airport, whereas on the localizer approach, the uh, 493 is the height above touchdown. Okay, so now we're in the part of this briefing where I'm going to be covering the localizer non-precision approach itself on the approach plate. So with this slide 17, I actually want to start with the Kepik 3 star. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on it, but I want to help orient you with some situational awareness because I'm going to actually start the flight demo on final approach. I'm sure most of you probably remember I fly the Kepik 3 in from Los Angeles, this star, that is uh, when I fly to Las Vegas and I normally shoot an ILS approach. For this uh, localizer approach, I'm still going to fly the Kepik 3. And as you know from previous videos, this forms a nice downwind leg coming in from this direction towards the east. And then uh, I slow just before I cross chips, I have to put out flaps five a little bit early to slow to 170 knots at or before crossing chips. Normally, uh, as you'll recall, when we 
turn base and get set up on a intercept heading for the localizer, that's the point where you normally would extend flaps from one and then to five. But because of the speed, that's actually done a little bit earlier because of uh, this uh, speed restriction. So anyway, uh, it's a left turn on the base, and then I'm going to intercept the localizer. But this time, because I want to fly a localizer approach, I'm not going to press the approach mode switch, APP switch. I'm going to push the VOR loc switch and arm for localizer capture. And then once I roll on to final uh, and have localizer uh, captured, that's when the flight demo uh, will begin. But that's how uh, I get there via this star, Kepic 3. Now we're going to take a look at the approach plate itself, and I'm going to start with the top half of the approach plate. Starting up here, I'm going to just cover and highlight the more pertinent, more important parts of the approach plate. Uh, starting up here in the pilot briefing section, this top part, which is above the plan view, I'm going to take note that the ILS frequency is actually 110.3. That's what I'm going to be using for this localizer approach. And the, the assumption on this localizer approach is that the glide slope is out of commission for this runway. Now, when I'm actually flying the approach, the glide slope is going to be functional, and I will see it in my PFD. Uh, however, I'm going to be using the VOR loc switch rather than the APP, the approach switch. So I'm not going to capture a glide slope, but I'll be able to see it and actually use that as sort of a visual reference to see how I'm, how my um, vertical speed descent rate, uh, how accurate that number is as I fly down the uh, vertical path towards the runway. So I'm not going to fly the glide slope, but I'll have it for, for a visual uh, reference. So the next item is the approach course. This is uh, inbound 255 degrees. We know from an earlier video in this series that we must have the course knob set for the inbound course for our navigation to be accurate on, on any approach. So we've got to set 255 on the course uh, knobs on the MCP panel. For 25 right, here's some information. The runway uh, length, touchdown zone elevation, airport elevation, and the same kind of information for 25 left. I'm going to be flying the localizer approach to 25 right at McCarran International Airport, which is Las Vegas. Up here is the information on the uh, right hand side of this next line which is the missed approach uh, information. In this case, I climb straight ahead to 3,200 feet, then continue a climbing right turn to 6,000 feet and proceed direct to the boulder VOR and hold. Frequencies are in the third row down in this pilot briefing section in the order that you would use them, starting from ATIS, Vegas Approach Control, the tower, ground, and then clearance delivery. And so that pretty much covers the highlights for the pilot briefing section. Now in the plan view, I talked a little bit earlier about the approach fixes. Here's the initial approach fix, the IAF. We have two of them on this plate. Here's the intermediate approach fix here uh, at HACO. I'm going to be coming in, as we know, from the south. So I'll be using uh, starting the approach using the Boulder VOR as my IAF, initial approach fix. Here's the Las Vegas VOR location right here in the frequency. And here's the uh, ILS localizer right here, 110.3. Now on this slide, before I get to the uh, bottom half of the approach plate briefing, I want to sort of quickly cover the uh, category approach speeds. In fact, let me open this up a little bit wider so that'll format a little bit better. So this area down here is what I'm talking about. Category, we're in the bottom half of the approach plate. We've got categories for landing minimums. And we also have the uh, type of approach that's being made. In this case, we've got ILS, uh, localizer, which is what I'm going to be doing, uh, sidestep maneuver to 2-5 left, uh, or circling approaches. And, and they all uh, fall under these various approach, uh, what we call approach categories. And that's based on speed, approach speed. And for the 737 NGX, 
we primarily fall into the C category, although we can spill over into the D category depending on what our speeds are. But this is what they look like. So for us, category C, a uh, approach speed of 121 knots to 141 knots puts you in that category C. And above 141, for uh, I'm talking about the 737 NGX, above 141, that would put us into a category D. So those uh, are the speeds that uh, determine uh, which approach uh, category you have to fall under for your minimums. So that's why I have C and D highlighted here. All right, so uh, that's our category. And here's our specific row for the localizer. And under, uh, I have flown uh, this pro approach before with this uh, same aircraft configuration. So I know my approach speed will just, just fall inside uh, C. So my minimum descent altitude for this non-precision approach is going to be 2,560 feet, and that's an MSL. And I'm going to actually set my MCP altitude window to 2,600 feet. I can set it high. Uh, I can't set exactly 2,560. Flight crew training manual for Boeing says to, they recommend setting, uh, rounding up the MDA because if you are still descending and you reach the MDA and have to go around, airplane can still settle an additional, or sink rather, an additional 50 feet before it starts a positive rate of climb. Uh, so that's what Boeing recommends in their flight crew training manual. So I'm going to set actually 2,600 feet for my MDA. The number here, which is above ground level, is height above touchdown. And uh, I do want to mention on circling approaches in the same position, this is referred to as the height above airport, 899 feet. Height above airport for circling approaches. For a localizer, it's height above touchdown, 493 feet. The numbers in parentheses uh, we don't use in the civilian world. They are military only. Now, the last item here is the visibility. And the visibility uh, shown here is three-quarter statue miles. If I fall under category D, it's one statue mile. This is a controlling value. Remember, this is a controlling value. So before I can legally uh, attempt to shoot this approach, the uh, reported visibility has to be three-quarters of a mile or greater. If it's less than that, then legally I can't shoot this approach. Now, in the profile view, we're going to review the final approach fix, the Maltese cross right here. And for non-precision non approaches, this is my final approach fix altitude, 3,800 feet. Remember, the lightning bar and this altitude value are for ILS approaches, so that doesn't apply to us. It's this smaller value here. And the uh, Maltese cross final approach fix marker for non-precision approaches. Here's my VDP, my visual descent point. It has one. So my go round is going to be 3.6 DME. On the airport diagram section, remember the uh, listing of uh, nautical miles from the FAF with this little arrow tells us that we can use DME to mark the missed approach point. But remember, this is for the traditional DME. So we took 7.5 at the final approach fix and subtracted 5.2 and we ended up with 2.3 DME but because we have a VDP we've got a new missed approach point and it's 3.6 DME but the significance of this value here in the airport diagram section if this is here if you've got a nautical mile uh, reference from the FAF then that tells you you don't have to use the stopwatch to denote the missed approach point. You can use DME. So if this is not here, then you have to get into the speed table and the timing table and interpolate or calculate through other means based on your approach speed what your missed approach time is in minutes and seconds. So this is the timing section down here. So I think uh, that pretty much covers the approach and that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so this concludes training videos number 13, 14, and 15 on the MCP localizer switch. 
specifically the localizer portion of the VOR LOC switch on the MCP panel. These three videos are the briefing videos for the localizer approach, which is the next video in this sequence. Please email me if you have any questions or comments, and thank you very much. I'll see you in the cockpit, and we'll actually fly this localizer non-precision approach.